Hello and welcome to the Quietly Talking Movies ASMR channel. My name's Matt and in this video I'd actually like to do something uh, out of ordinary of sorts. Although I really like to talk about the physical media on this channel, uh, I really do like talking about the film uh, in general. And as much as I love to actually watch my films in Blu-rays and 4Ks, I very much love watching them uh, in the cinema first. Um, so uh, going to the cinema is an experience like no other. And unless you have a cinema in your own house, um, there's no better way to experience the films. Uh, even if you have like a 4K uh, Blu-ray with Dolby Atmos soundtrack. There's um, there's nothing better than a cinematic experience, and big black screen. Um, that being said, um, there are a couple of releases uh, from twenty twenty three, even twenty twenty four, and that I have seen in the cinemas recently, and I'd actually like to talk about them as well as perhaps talk about some of the films that I haven't even seen yet. Um, so what I got here are the particular um, magazines or booklets that are being handed out in um, some of the cinemas in the UK, namely the Picture House Cinemas and the Everyman Cinemas. Um, so uh, here in Edinburgh, in Scotland, we actually have a couple of cinemas. Um, obviously, we have the big chains like View, we have Audion, and we have Cineworld. But we do also have a couple of more niche as well as independent cinemas. Uh, Picture House is a chain that actually uh, works with independent cinemas so uh, although it is a chain it basically they didn't create the cinemas themselves right they were there before that before picture house however picture house provides funding and so forth and they're really good at uh, maintaining that independent cinema spirit uh, whereas Everyman is I think it's a newly created I mean reasonably new uh, newly created uh, company which doesn't only uh, create their own cinemas but they also provide a very luxurious cinematic experience um, uh, which is uh, which is a very good and in a way quite refreshing um, to say the least when you're actually going to experience a film in the cinema uh, growing up and the only cinema experience that I knew was actually through this you know big corporate chains uh, where you just go buy a ticket and you go and watch a movie However, with every man cinema, it's actually go, it's it, it has the cinema going experience has actually turned into experiencing film on the move, um, a relaxing um, note, because they do not offer only just the cinema and the uh, cinema rooms uh, where they actually project the films, but they also have a bar. They provide. They have a restaurant. Uh, at least in Edinburgh, it's actually like a multi-level uh, cinema where you can actually just go lounge or relax, have a chat with friends. Um, even if I could say so, it's a very good place for a date as well. So here is my shameless uh, plug and advert advertisement for Everyman Cinema. Um, all right, so without further ado, um, I'd actually like to go through um, some some of the films that are actually presented here. Um, it, I'm not going to be talking in very big detail on how, what I actually liked about the movies and not, because there's going to be 
quite a lot of them that they've seen um, and some of them might actually be even being repeated uh, from, you know from the magazine in picture or in the magazine in everyman um, but that being said um, let me uh, go through the first magazine and I guess I'm gonna start with the picture house uh, I think the magazine that they're actually handing out is really uh, really thorough good uh, good quality and it features a lot of extras so it's not just information about the films but they also have the interviews inside and a couple of other articles that uh, you might enjoy so this particular one is from December until February so it's basically a winter time um, I think they were releasing this uh, with two covers so we have the same one for the same uh, season but with a poor things cover and we have all of us strangers on the other but inside they're basically the same so there's no difference at all uh, in what is actually inside except for the cover so uh, if you allow me I'm just gonna uh, hold on to one um, so here are some of the films that are actually presented in this uh, in this particular edition we get poor things we get the taste of things we got the boy and the heron Priscilla, we call it Holdovers, and One Life. Um, yeah, so um, let's go through it. Just gonna put it nicely on the table. Just gonna make sure that the framing is alright and you're able to. Uh, read alongside with me. Okay, we got the Priscilla poster and we got the table of contents. So they're actually doing a couple of, I think, regular um, reviews. We got the Yarina review, which I think is a, which I think is a special article where they're just actually talking about the whole year in cinema. We got the information about the films coming soon. We got the, in, I think, uh, like a spotlight on the director, Tran An Hing, uh, who is the director of the French film, The Taste of Things. Uh, we got a couple of articles and we got the big interview. So they have an interview, exclusive interview with the actress Juliette Binoche who's actually in the film The Taste of Things and we got a long list of the films in preview so yeah let's let's take a look at what we have here um, yeah so this is All of Us Strangers and I did see that in the cinema and it's a phenomenal film if I do say so myself I rated that uh, 80 out of 100 uh, it's a beautiful poignant, mysterious almost ethereal and oniric film um, uh, with great performances by uh, Andrew Scott Paul Mascal uh, Claire Foy and Jamie Bell uh, I really do recommend it and it's directed by Andrew Hay Haig um, who is the director of a film that I really liked uh, 45 years with Charlotte Rampling and uh, I really wouldn't like to forget the name of the actor I think his name was Tom um, Tom something sorry about that uh, the film had a release date on the 26th of January in the cinema in the UK. And you're going to like this film if you've seen uh, and you liked uh, A Single Man by Tom Ford from 2009, 
the Barry Jenkins film Moonlight and also the After Sun uh, which was quite a recent release from 2022 okay we've got the year in review I'm not going to read that it's basically some uh, I think from the team of Picture House just a selected couple of words on what they really liked uh, here's what's coming soon and uh, I think these films are still to come in the cinemas in the UK uh, we got the Hirokazu Korida monster which is coming out in on the 29th of March uh, we got the Luca Guadagino uh, Guadagnino uh, challenges with Zendaya we got Mike Faced from West Side Story from Steven Spielberg and we got Josh O'Connor so I'm really looking forward to that one and the release date was actually pushed from 2023 I believe to the 26th of April uh, 2024 and here is a, a preview of the film Dune Part 2 by Denis Villeneuve starring Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya and a couple of other great A-list actors it had a release date of 15th of March uh, which uh, I don't think it's correct I think it was released on the 1st of March here in the UK um, so they might have actually moved the, the release date for uh, I think uh, a little bit up um, I've seen that film uh, I've actually seen this film for a second time in IMAX today um, but I'm just going to reserve my thoughts for another time um, okay we've got the uh, spotlight for the uh, Tran and Hung um, who has actually directed these particular films in the past The Scent of Green Papaya in 1993 Norwegian Wood in 2010 uh, which is the adaptation of the novel by um, Haruki Murakami and we got the Taste of Things releasing this year and I believe it was the French candidate for uh, for the Oscars art d this year however it didn't actually went to get a nomination uh, so I guess like uh, everybody was laughing at France uh, because instead of uh, they could have essentially a, an Oscar in the pocket if they would just um, nominate Anatomy of a Fall by Justine Triet. Um, but well, they went with the taste of things and it didn't get a nomination. Um, but that's not to say that the film is bad or anything. Uh, I think far from it. <laughs> okay, we got the Fest Feast, which is basically like a seasonal um, essay on food in Christmas movies. Going to interview with Jeanette, uh, Juliette Benoche, uh, who is the star of The Taste of Things. We've got the poster for the uh, seven time Oscar nominee uh, Maestro. Since the Oscars have already happened, unfortunately, the film did not get uh, a single award, uh, which is a shame, I think. Like for films which are nominated so many times to not get a single award is kind of weird to be honest but well it is it is how it is right um and here are some of the recommendations um so yeah we get poo things directed by Yorgos Lanthimos the great greek director um, the film had a release date on the 12th of January uh, it stars Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe we got Rami Youssef and we got Jared Carmichael and Margaret Cawley as well 
and obviously it's one of the biggest films of 2023. It went on to win four Academy Awards, uh, including Best Actress for Emma Stone. In my opinion, a very deserved uh, Emma Stone creates a fantastic character. Um, the, the acting itself, it demanded to actually be someone completely extraordinary. Uh, essentially a, a child in an adult's body or uh, yeah it's it, it's completely bonkers and fantastic and if you've seen uh, Yorgos Lanthimos' uh, previous films uh, you might already know that these films are quite bizarre uh, but poor things is actually putting like uh, Lanthimos is like skills on another level uh, because as a director he was able to actually create a, a fantastic uh, a fantastic film uh, with great production design costumes oh my god the costumes and the production design uh, great music and uh, yeah the performances and in fact the story itself uh, was quite astonishing to watch if you're able to, you know, stomach uh, like 30 minutes of sex scenes in the movie, well, um, but nonetheless, it's a great film, and they've rated that 85 out of 100, so really, really recommend it. Um, another film uh, that I've seen as well is The Holdovers, and that's a film I have seen actually. Uh, in my home country during the holiday season, uh, because it was it was actually playing before uh, um, before the UK release date, I think somewhere in December, uh, and I was lucky to actually get a uh, get a screening. But oh my god, I love this this film. It's, it has a very great Christmassy feel. Uh, it's basically about a couple of students in a college i think i would call it college uh who gets um so everybody is going for like the christmas holidays uh they're going home all the students all the teachers however there are a couple of students who actually have to, to stay behind because they have nowhere to go or may, maybe because you know, like some change of plans and uh, one of them is um, is Dominic Sessa in a breakthrough role as um, Angus, I believe his name was Angus, um, uh, among other of like students, and they all get basically uh, uh, looked over by not looked over, sorry, and they all get uh, basically looked after by the grumpy, alcoholic, sm like oddly smelling uh, older uh, teacher, professor at the college. Uh, so we get Paul Giamatti in the role of Paul Hanum. Uh, so I think he's a teacher of uh, the antiquity and what happens is later like a great story and like a coming of age story and basically like a bromance uh, um, develops between uh, Paul and, and Angus and the deepness and the richness of the characters is like really extraordinary and at the same time, we go on the performance by Daphne John Randolph. And she is also the one who uh, got the Academy Award for the supporting, Best Supporting Actress. Um, I really love that film. Uh, I think everyone should see that. Uh, it's a great, f in a way, family film. In a way. Um, because it actually talks about the festive season it's quite comfortable to watch as well uh, i think a lot of people actually 
considered that to be a new Christmas classic uh, and it's hard to disagree with them so that's the holdovers and I really recommend that that's uh, 90 out of 100 uh, in my books great film fantastic okay so next one we have next goal wins which is a film by Taika Waititi uh, however I have not seen that so I can't actually say how good it is I think Taika Waititi as a director is uh, at least lately he's a kind of like a hit and miss he had some good movies but he had a couple of stinkers as well uh, obviously he had like a high when uh, he released Thor Ragnarok um, and also went on to win an Academy Award for the best screenplay or adapted screenplay for Jojo Rabbit uh, and previously he made great films like The Hunt for the Wilder People as well as What We Do in the Shadows great films, great comedy films um, but then he went on to direct Thor Love and Thunder and now next goal wins I don't think it's actually getting out of uh, great critics uh, reviews either um, here's another film that I've actually seen during the holiday season that's Wonka and it's a film by Paul King if you know this guy you probably know him from directing two Paddington films and I believe that the two Paddington films are really great family uh, films like, and they stress this family films so this kind of like this genre of films which can be enjoyed by all family members uh, there's a lot of charm in these films uh, in the Paddington films and Wonka is no different it starts Timothy Chalamet as young Willy Wonka who comes to this um, city which kind of like verges on between in style like between Italy France and London but it's never actually I think quite explained uh, but he comes to that city and he tries to open a shop but he has to fight with uh, other chocolate makers um, I think we got the Slugworth, we got the Fickle Gruber and we got the Proud Nose uh, who actually already have established shops and they create a they're part of this chocolate cartel which runs the city and obviously the arrival of the newcomer Wonka uh, obviously um, threats the existence of the cartel but obviously we Wonka is a genius in chocolate making so he really actually takes them on head on um, and it's a really great family comedy film really recommend it as well that's a 70 out of 100 in my books um, yeah, so uh, when it comes to the cast, we got the theme that is Chalamet, uh, we got Carl Lane, Patterson, Patterson Joseph, Matt Lucas, Matthew Bynton, we got Sally Hawkins, Roman Atkinson, Jim Carter, but we also get Olivia Coleman and Hugh Grant as Oompa Loompa. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, quite extraordinary cast to be honest. You're gonna like this if you enjoyed Paddington film, obviously. Yes, okay, uh, so that's Wonka. All right, so next we actually got Eileen, and uh, that's a film I haven't seen to be honest, but it's uh, I think it's kind of like a thriller, I, I would like to say, I guess, from the trailers. So I think it was kind of like a thriller coming of age story thriller I guess uh, with Thomas and Mackenzie uh, starring in the lead role and we got Anne Hathaway uh, as a supporting actress I think it got like favourable reviews so uh, one might enjoy that uh, right next we got Priscilla it's a new film by Sofia Coppola um, 
which is a who is a great director in my opinion of such films like Lost in Translation. Um, we got the what was it? Nova or somewhere. Um, also Marie Antoinette. We got uh, The Beguiled. Uh, we got a couple of great films. Uh, and Sofia Coppola's, uh, Sofia Coppola's direction and here's a new film which is Priscilla which comes a year after um, the release of Elvis with by Baz Luhrmann with Austin Butler and obviously that film focuses completely on Elvis and represents a specific side of Elvis this is Priscilla and Priscilla was a wife of Elvis Presley and essentially what this film does is presenting uh, Priscilla and how she actually and how was the marriage to Elvis Presley from her point of view I believe it's based uh, on the book by Priscilla uh, Priscilla uh, Presley uh, her, herself uh, so uh, it really goes deep into the specifics of of the marriage but also presented as, from her point of view and I think that's what the film does great as well is basically Elvis is a very a very much a supporting um, it's a very secondary character it's very much a secondary character um, and um, Priscilla is actually taking like the foreground uh, in this film um, well, I really quite enjoyed the look and feel of the film I wasn't really enamored by the story itself I felt it actually is a bit on the boring side um, I think and because of the uh, artistic choices that had to be made in order to make the story work um, uh, so it, it was in a way maybe a double-edged sword but uh, Kaylee Spaney as uh, Priscilla is really good uh, we got Jacob Elordi as uh, as uh, Elvis also in a good role and um, yeah that's uh, also another 70 out of 100 film okay Next we go on the taste of things, which I, I think I covered quite somewhat, quite a bit, um, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I think it's coming out on the physical media sometime in April, so uh, I might actually grab this, uh, grab it on the Blu-ray. Uh, another film that I haven't seen is Ferrari by Michael Mann who returns as a director and in this film he actually directs Adam Driver as uh, I think his name is Enzo Enzo Ferrari I think I think it was Enzo um, let's assume it's Enzo Ferrari um, and I think it follows basically his way to make Ferrari like the great uh, car manufacturer that it is today obviously in the backdrop of uh, car races and it's basically uh, also like I think a family drama uh, with in the background as we have Penelope Cruz here we got Shinley Woodley we got Patrick Dempsey, Sarah Gaiden and Jack O'Connell I haven't seen that movie um, I might actually see that sometime soon but I haven't seen that yet uh, another film I haven't seen is The Coral Purple uh, by Blitz Basavula. Basavula sorry if I'm mispronouncing that but it was like considered this like big reinvention of the um, of the classic book by Alice Walker um, so uh, so it's not essentially a remake of the uh, Steven Spielberg film because Steven Spielberg created the color purple 
film in the 1980s um, and I have actually have it in the physical media format and uh, the Steven Spielberg film on 4k ultra HD and I can't wait to see it uh, however I wasn't really actually sold on the idea of uh, on the musical I think it actually is a musical version of the core purple um, but we get like a very star-studded um, cast here we got Taraji P. Hansen, Daniel Brooks and Coleman Domingo we got Corey Hawkins and Halle Bailey uh, as well so that's really uh, interesting uh, we had Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nuggets uh, completely missed out in the cinemas to be fair uh, that's a film that is actually was released quite recently it's a Wicked Little Letters a British film starring Olivia Colman, Jesse Buckley and also uh, I think Timothy Spall and I think it's a, a, a real life story uh, which actually had uh, which is uh, essentially based on there was like this controversy of uh, a couple of letters being sent to people uh, insulting them uh, essentially with like very uh, very bad words um, haven't seen that yet I think it's uh, it's quite a pleasant watch and very funny uh, well uh, we'll see wicked little letters okay here's a film I have seen uh, on the other hand and that's perfect days it was the Academy Award nominee for Japan was it Japan or was it Germany I think it was Germany because I think it's a German produced film uh, but it's happening in Tokyo and it is in Japanese but it is a German film uh, the director of this film is Wim Wenders uh, who is a legendary filmmaker uh, who has created films since 1980s and he's very prolific he's making a lot of films a lot of documentaries as well uh, however Perfect Days is an adaptation uh, of a book I think or just uh, or a short story and it basically follows this um, uh already middle-aged man as he goes through life and through the day uh, and it's a very peaceful uh, very tranquil film as we just follow this man uh, throughout the day uh, as he wakes up he goes to work he goes from work uh, what is basically uh, his daily routine and we go through that we go through his weekend routine and it's basically like a very repetitive film uh, which is actually making us uh, very much aware of our surroundings and it's a very stoic film and uh, uh, it actually teaches us a lot about understanding of transit nature of life and that gentle wistfulness towards time passing uh, the mono no aware uh, the Japanese idiom I think that's a really uh, really great take on the film uh, in many aspects I think this is a very uh, much a spiritual uh, spiritual sequel to the film Partisan by Jim Jarmusch from 2016 starring Adam Driver uh, I think both Partisan and Perfect Day is the great films. Uh, however, what I think is actually better about Perfect Days compared to Partisan is the fact that there's this underlying drama of the character um, Hirayama, uh, who uh, is actually, yeah, who we're actually following. Right, uh, so there's this underlying drama and trauma uh, 
unspeakable trauma, but we don't know what it is. There's a couple of scenes, uh, especially when the character actually has to go outside of his routine a bit, that we actually learn a bit more, but the film never actually goes into specific details. But we know that something has happened to this character in the past that made him the way the, that made him the man he is today. Um, so yeah, uh, that's Perfect Days, and I think it's a great film. Uh, but you have to be prepared that it, in many aspects, is a, perhaps a um, you know two hours of basically a guy doing nothing, right? But th that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of basically being present. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a 80 out of 100 film. Really recommended, great film. Uh, so we got next is Iron Claw, uh, which is a real surprise. It's a 24 film directed by Sean Durkin. It stars Zac Efron, Jeremy, Jeremy Allen White from The Bear, Harris Dickinson and uh, Holt McCallany. Kalani and Lily James it basically is about this family uh, of wrestlers and I think it's a great uh, from, well from what I've heard it's a really great sports film uh, and a lot of uh, and there's a big drama uh, on the side as well I've heard really good reviews about this film however I have not seen this unfortunately so I cannot actually speak much about it the Iron Claw. Uh, here's uh, a film uh, that we saw the poster for before, and it's the seven time Academy Award nominated film Maestro, directed by Bradley Cooper. Um, so, this is the film that I have actually seen, however, not in cinemas, but on Netflix um, before I cancelled my subscription. And um, Maestro basically follows the uh, life of Leonard Bernstein, uh, who is the great uh, American uh, composer and conductor um, from America, uh, who was actually very a uh, big influence. Uh, on uh, physical, uh, sorry, physical, uh, on the uh, musical, uh, on the musical stage, especially for films, as well as classical music, and uh, I knew of Leonard Bernstein before the film, and I was really excited for that, I was really excited for that, I love classical music, I love film music, soundtracks, and I knew Leonard Bernstein, I've seen a couple of videos of him uh, as he explains and the meaning behind some of the uh, classical music or why the music itself is as it is. Uh, and so I was really excited for that film, especially knowing that Bradley Cooper is not a bad director. Uh, I think he has done a good job uh, with uh, A Star Is Born but Maestro just didn't sing, unfortunately. Um, I, I don't think it's a necessarily a bad movie. I think it is a, uh, it's a fine film, but it definitely actually uh, misses the mark when it comes to uh, how deep it goes into uh, showing the life of Leonard Bernstein. Uh, the relationships that he has with his wife, I think it's a very, all is kept quite superficial, it doesn't actually delve into details, um, so yeah, it just comes and goes uh, when it comes to the story, so uh, I think that's quite unfortunate. Um, so I've rated that 65 out of 100 um, so that's really unfortunate because, as I said, I really wanted to love this film. Um, but that's not to say uh, the acting is great, especially by Carrie Mulligan, 
who plays uh, Bernstein's wife. Uh, it's, the cinematography is great, the editing is great. I, I think there's a lot of things to love with Maestro. Uh, but the story just doesn't. Um, doesn't allow you to actually enjoy this film more, I, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, next we have One Life, which I haven't seen. Uh, in all honesty, it's an Anthony Hopkins film, and I think it's basically kind of like an, a based on a real life story um, film about a guy receiving, I think, his long time due and recognition as a person who saved a lot of Jewish lives during uh, the World War II. Uh, sorry if I spoiled anything, but it's basically everything is in the trailer, so yeah. Uh, I haven't seen that. Apparently it's quite good, but I haven't seen it. Um, Mean Girls, uh, which uh, just like Call Purple is another adaptation or sequel um, so I think adaptation let's say it's not a sequel um, it's another adaptation of a work and it turns into a musical so if you loved Mean Girls with uh, Rachel McAdams and Lindsay Lohan and the others um, and you come in to watch this movie and be prepared that it is uh, a musical as well. Um, on the right side, on the other hand, we do have The Boy and the Heron. And it's, uh, it's a film that I did see uh, in the English dub version. Uh, as, uh, it was actually the the version that was actually um, I was able to watch uh, at one a particular moment in time so no Japanese version was actually available to me and it's a film by Studio Ghibli from Japan directed by Hayao Miyazaki the legendary filmmaker of films like uh, Princess Mononoke Spirited Away uh, Porco Rosso, only yesterday, there's a lot of films behind his belt that are just legendary, right? And The Boy and the Heron was also heralded as one of the greatest films of his career. Uh, Hayao Miyazaki is a person who actually comes and goes out of retirement all the time, always says that it's his last movie. Um, the Boy and the Heron apparently is having a lot of personal elements. Uh, to Miyazaki and if you've seen any Studio Ghibli films uh, you basically know what to expect in terms of the beautiful animation the strangeness and the weirdness and so forth uh, obviously the underlying theme of this film is that the boy has lost his mother um, and when uh, I think it happens all, like within 12 months time so when the story actually starts it's already been like 12 months since his mother died um, and what happens is that he moves with his dad to like a countryside and he still tries to uh, you know uh, reconcile with his with his mother's death um, and what follows is basically a story how he actually finds this new world and uh, he finds a lot of danger and he goes on a journey of kind of like self-discovery as well as trying to uh, you know reconcile as I said with his mum's death and just as the animation uh, obviously it's um, I think it's hand drawn uh, it's not uh, it's not there's no CGI in it it's not computer animated everything is hand drawn um, so as an animation uh, itself it's really great and spectacular I think the the prologue of the film 
with the fire that's oh that looked so amazing in cinema however story wise obviously there's a lot of strangeness and weirdness and stuff like that that is happening and it's you know confusing but also a, a bit uh, obviously confu it's confusing enigmatic but also quite interesting but on the other side we actually have this you know uh, base story of a boy trying to actually get you know get a grip of his mom's death and i think that's something that was explored in films in the past as well i think one film that it actually this the boy in the heron actually remind me of is uh, uh, juan antonio bayona's a monster calls uh, i think it's a very similar film in terms of this uh, uh, of its themes and so forth um, so yeah that's the boy and the heron and i've rated that 70 out of 100 as well uh, really recommended uh, you might actually like it more than i do um, but yeah the boy and the heron um, here's i think maybe the last film in this booklet i think i've already been recording for like 15 minutes and i just went down to the to the end of the first booklet <laughs> oh time flies but essentially we have aquaman and the lost kingdom it was released in december and i actually have seen it in december as well uh, but yeah it's a sequel to the aquaman directed by james wan who we might actually know from the horror films like insidious or the conjuring franchise right uh, but he went on to direct uh, aquaman which opened to a great uh, box office success actually uh, especially in i think in china people loved it uh, but uh yeah aquaman and the lost kingdom i didn't like I think uh, is it's not a great film the story the acting um, it's like special effects are quite okay but I think the story itself is <clears throat> it's very simple repetitive a copy paste of all the other sequels um, there's nothing quite interesting in that film to be honest so if you've seen the first film and you're going into the second film the lost kingdom i'm thinking that you're going to see a lot of great things uh, be prepared that it's basically uh, it's a film where nothing really happens nothing really changes um i think it's basically just a cash grab uh, but at the same time i think aquaman and the lost kingdom is the last film from dc uh, extended universe so all those like you know superman and batman dawn of justice justice league films this is the last of that universe anything from dc moving forward is essentially from the new uh universe that uh what's his name james gunn he's creating um okay so we got an article about some of the national theater live that we can actually see in the cinemas hayao miyazaki profile so yeah that's the end of the picture house so really really thorough as you can see that covers like three months uh, worth of film inside um yeah i've enjoyed a couple of films in picture house which were actually presented here all right now let's move on to the everyman uh, booklets which i think uh, i'm just going to skim through because they cover mostly the same films that i've already uh, just mentioned uh, they don't have like as um as uh, many films in it as well 
and they also do not go like into very specific um, into such detail as the picture has um, so this one is actually for January and February of 2024. So this covers the two months. Uh, I got the poster for uh, Bob Marley, One Love. I was playing in cinemas on the February 14th. Um, that's an American version of the date, 14th of February. Um, I didn't hear actually good things about it. I'm not really into Raga either, or Bob Marley, so yeah, not really. Um, yeah, we got poor things, uh, which I already covered. Really great film. Got the wicked little letters. We got the Q&A with Thea Shark, who I think is the director of Wicked Little Letters. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, that's uh, All of Us Strangers and I saw that on the, in the Everyman cinema. So here's my ticket. And... Oh, sorry. Um, that's the lobby card for all of us strangers. Uh, it's basically the same. As you can see the picture in here. Uh, basically a postcard as well. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe uh, a bit. So what I have as well is essentially a movie go subscription. They were actually running a the movie streaming service it was actually running a sale a discount on the MobiGo subscription, uh, which is a yearly subscription, uh, which gives you the access to the whole Mubi streaming service, as well as gives you one free cinema ticket in selected cinemas every week. So let me repeat that. One free cinema ticket every week for selected cinemas around you um, in Edinburgh there's actually two participating cinemas we got the picture house Camille as well as the Everyman in Edinburgh and I've enjoyed a lot of films already with the movie go uh, and you get a free ticket I mean what's not to love and uh, the um, after the discount, the subscription was uh, £99. So that's £99 per year that you uh, that you pay around. And you get that f uh, streaming service as well as a cinema ticket every week for free. Um, so uh, that's uh, after seven times you go to the cinema that already pays for itself because uh, especially with the uh, cinemas like Picture House as well as Everyman if you go and book a ticket the ticket price can actually go from like 10 to 14 pounds right uh, so yeah really really recommend that uh, if you're a cinema lover in the film lover okay so that's uh, all the strangers we got Priscilla again uh, that's an ad so you basically see what the inside of a cinema uh, every month cinema actually is uh, basically got nice tables art deco a kind of like a style maybe not art deco maybe like kind of like 1970s style at least the one in edinburgh um it's uh, it's really something it's a great experience got the color purple bob marley one of the iron call 
got a couple of like uh, do you know this like let's go from Hugh Grant to Emma Stone like in film like go what connects all of them uh, both of them right so they actually have this I think in in the next months as well they just go that Hugh Grant was playing an Oompa Loompa in Wonka right but uh, so we have to go through Hugh Grant to Emma Stone so what connects them right so uh, Hugh Grant was also playing in Glass Onion and Knives Out, Mi Knives, Knives Out Mystery which features uh, Edward Norton Edward Norton was playing in Asteroid City which also featured Jeffrey Wright Jeffrey Wright was playing in No Time to Die with Luciana Lynch and Luciana Lynch was playing with Viola Davis in The Woman King and Viola Davis was playing with Emma Stone in The Help from 2011 so that's basically how it goes Got the taste of things uh, I think there's a lot a lot of great great sequences of uh, cooking and food in this uh, so I think like the advice is either not going uh, to see this film on an empty stomach or in fact is going to see this film on an empty stomach just uh, just as well to be prepared to actually go to a restaurant right after um, The Boys in the Boat um, directed by George Clooney which I don't think it actually made a, bit, a lot of a splash in, in fact the holdovers mean girls and we got oh my god I haven't seen it but I'm not really a fan of the Sony uh, like Spider-Man films I mean not specifically Spider-Man I think the Spider-Man is where they actually are doing a, a fine job but all the films around Spider-Man from the universe that they trying to create alongside MCU Venom and uh, Morbius oh my god uh, I think they're terrible and Madame Web is hailed as I think the worst of them all um, everybody is basically laughing like you know uh, this guy was in the Amazon with my mom when she died researching spiders. <laughs> and line, oh my god, come on. Uh, migration. Oh, here's another ticket. Perfect days, every man and Um Here's the booklets from every man, and that's the last one that I'm going to be presenting. Uh, and that is for March and April now um, I'm just going to go through the um, maybe shortly because it, it, it's quite a short one actually um, so we got Dune part 2 uh, on the on the coverage uh, here's my Everyman Edinburgh ticket for drive away doors which I've seen a couple of days ago uh, so first up we go to Dune part 2 at least March 1st I'm going to talk about Dune in more details really soon so uh, I, I apologies if I'm not talking about the film yet we have Back to Black, which is Amy Winehouse biopic. Uh, not really a fan of Amy Winehouse, so I'm not really looking forward to that film. But yeah, if that's something you you like uh, and you enjoyed, uh, this might be actually something you'd actually want to see. Uh, ads. Civil War, and that's actually releasing in April. I already got and booked my IMAX uh, screening of that film because it's actually releasing the IMAX um, it's a film directed by Alex Garland who is the director of Annihilation 
with Natalie Pullman as well as Ex Machina with Oscar Isaac and uh, Donald Gleason and Alicia Vikander and this film actually follows like a very kind of like a dystopian near future like a, uh, it's basically almost like a current times where the United States is getting a divided so much that it actually enters another civil war and the film actually uh, follows this uh, a wartime reporter played by Kirsten Dunst as she goes through the country ravaged by civil war and she is headed to Washington DC uh, as the forces uh, try to take over Washington DC and the White House and I think that uh, in a way this film is actually playing on the um, you know all empires fall kind of like uh, uh, theme which I find really fascinating especially uh, considering what's happening in the world right now and w what the United States is essentially doing like in a lot of places um, so this kind of like you know you know a uh, alternative reality uh, is actually quite it's going to be quite a riveting watch I think so really looking forward to see that civil war we called Kung Fu Panda 4 so I think Kung Fu Panda is going the same direction as Toy Story and we get a new film every 10 years or something um, I think they're really good but uh, yeah I'm probably not gonna see that in the cinema um, uh, it's here we have a film I already talked about it's Luca Guadagnino uh, challenges uh, which is basically kind of like a tri love triangle uh, story around tennis um, so uh, yeah it's going to, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see challenges and here is a film that probably is the least interesting of all the films in the whole uh, two magazines that have actually covered Godzilla Kong The New Empire it's a sequel to the films like Godzilla, Godzilla King of Monsters The Kong School Island Godzilla vs Kong and it's essentially the Americanized uh, version of the you know the monster kaiju films from you know the uh, especially like the Japan and the old ones the old King Kong from 1930s it's like uh, they're going like big destruction uh, visual effects uh, there's nothing real on the screen and I think with each new film the story goes into so many ridiculous directions uh, and I think this one is the one that I'm not really looking forward to I think even from the trailers, the film really looked um, boring, disgusting uh, uh, on the you know visual side of things, and um, completely ridiculous. I'm not really looking forward to that. If you want to watch a great um, big monster film, look no further than. A Japanese Godzilla minus one that was released uh, this year uh, early this year I think even 2023 and it goes like the release date in 2024 in the UK Godzilla minus one that's a fantastic great film and I don't think this film is actually going to be able to go even near uh, the same level uh, as that film actually went well um, <clears throat> another film that is actually coming up in March is Mother's Instinct it's a film uh, directed by Benoit Delon 
and it stars uh, Academy Award winners Anne Hathaway and Jessica Chastain and it's basically I think uh, a drama or even a thriller I think uh, it's about these two mothers who are actually close friends however a tragedy occurs and basically um, they turn they turn against each other in a way and uh, they're kind of like in a very nice suburb of life in 1960s America turns into apologies turns into like a, a thrill thriller and yeah it could be quite interesting actually um, we'll see mother's instinct um, here's a poster for love lies bleeding apparently a really good film uh, but I don't think it actually gets released until May 3rd we got the uh, the play to go from Willem Dafoe to Javier Bardem and last but not least we actually have the first omen which i think is a sequel or a prequel or whatever it is uh, to the omen films from 1976 um yeah it's another one of those uh, horror sequels prequels that they're doing which i'm not really interested in okay so that's it when it comes to when it comes to the films that I've actually seen in cinemas recently um, apologies that the video is quite long um, I didn't expect that it's going to take me so so long to actually talk about these films uh, but nonetheless I hope you actually enjoyed me actually going through all these and uh, you might actually got some recommendations to what actually watch next uh, a lot of these films actually are coming up in uh, f on physical media really soon I think Poor Things is getting a release on Blu-ray on the 25th of March um, The Holdovers are actually getting a release on the 22nd of April uh, with uh, with a 4K and Blu-ray uh, combinations, the Taste of Things is actually getting a release sometime in April as well. Priscilla is getting a release on the 22nd of April. Uh, One Life, uh, I think it's already available as of the date of this recording uh, on Blu-ray. So yeah, um, I hope you actually got something out of that and uh, I'll see you in the next one thank you so much cheers